ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. All right, so I want to come on here and talk about the whole situation with Pastor John Gray. So if you guys don't know, he is a pastor. He was on the internet show for a while. And I was making up a song. You look good. <laughs> Who you a big strong woman wants to back that thing. <laughs> Thank you, G. <laughs> and um, back in January, he went viral. A lot of people were really upset because he gifted his wife, the first lady, a $200,000 Lamborghini, okay? So people were like, okay, what the hell? Why is he just randomly taking the church's money and um, buying his wife a $200,000 Lamborghini? A lot of people talking about this, a lavish gift that a former pastor at Lakewood Church gave to his wife, a $200,000 Lamborghini. We're getting your take. Do you see anything wrong with this? Uh, you can weigh in on the KHOU 11 mobile app. Tonight, the pastor is defending himself. David Gonzalez gives us a look at how Gray is responding to the backlash. What I want to talk about here is uh, my eight year wedding anniversary. Pastor John Gray took to social media to address the backlash he's received for celebrating his wife Aventer on their anniversary. Gray presenting her with the brand new Lambo. The extravagant gift making headlines. Pastor buys his wife you know, this expensive car. First of all, it wasn't a pastor that bought the car. It was a husband that bought the car. Get that in your spirit. On social media, some people questioned his wealth. Did this man use any money from the church to do this? And the answer is no, absolutely not. Gray is now the pastor at a church in South Carolina, but still preaches at Lakewood Church in Houston. Many people here still have his back. Being married and my husband gave me one, I would think that he loves me more than he loves money. Gray used money he saved from his reality show on the Oprah Winfrey Network, book deals and other endorsements to pay for the car. He asked people not to confuse what he does for who he is. And so people at that point were thinking he must have got somebody pregnant. He got a side chick. He's trying to buy his wife back. That's why I got to fight my devils and my dad so my son don't have to fight mine. Because I don't need him dealing with three generations of stuff, Pastor Ken. So instead of him being in front of me, I need to get in front of him and say, no, devil, you can't have him. You can't have my family. You can't have my son. You can't have my seed. You can't have my legacy. And this is my son, my only begotten son in whom I'm well pleased, and that's my daughter, my only begotten daughter, in whom I'm well pleased. So then he ended up admitting that he had an emotional affair. He didn't have a sexual affair, but he had an emotional affair. So he ends up going on daytime television yesterday. He goes on to The Real, and they were asking him about that. And what I find funny is that Adrian Bailon had so many questions about his alleged affair. Meanwhile, you was the other woman in your new husband's relationship, okay? Your new husband is a pastor or some shit like that, and you was fucking him while he was still with the first lady. So, Adrian, I'm going to need you to fall back from this conversation. But anyways, the pastor's on there, and he's talking about, you know, he just had an emotional affair. He never did nothing sexual. The wife is there all smiles and gums, honey. All you see is teeth and damn gums clapping her ass off. You can't tell her shit. She got her man. Anyways, y'all go ahead and watch this damn clip, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Did you have an affair, and if so, when did it start? The answer is no, yeah. uh, I didn't. Uh, but over a year ago... <laughs> <laughs> over, right, right. Over a year ago, uh, my wife and I were in a very difficult place in our marriage. And in that time, uh, I began to converse with someone other than a counselor, other than a pastoral leader, which is where I should have taken my yeah. issues and challenges and began to converse. And I was even in the presence of that person one time. But being in the presence of someone is not the same as sleeping with them. I did not sleep with anyone. I, there's no baby. There's none of that. And so it's important for me to take responsibility for the areas where I did come up short. Okay. Sharing things about my marriage outside of my wife and outside of trusted counselors is an emotional affair. It was wrong. I take responsibility for that. Wow. But I will not take responsibility for that which I did not do. 
as a pastor, it's important for people to know that when I get up in that pulpit, I come not as a perfect man, but as a broken man, which is why we talked about these very things yeah. at the first sermon of our church. Right. People act like this is something, you know, brand new, but we've walked through this. We have peace, but people don't. Yeah. So, oh, again, this, the, the, the genesis of this was over a year ago, mm -hmm. but we talked about this in May uh, at our church. And, and so we're moving forward. We're believing God that this will be an opportunity for other people to heal. Yeah. But I do yeah. want to set that record. All right, so you guys just watched that foolishness. So after he claimed in front of the, you know, congregation at the real that he did not cheat on his wife, it was just an emotional affair and he was wrong for confiding another woman and all that other stuff, the miss was like, oh, okay, so you didn't cheat? You don't know who I am? It was just emotional? Let me go ahead and leak these damn tapes. So yes, you know, like I always tell y'all, these damn side chicks, mistresses of, of the 2000s on up, they have no cooth. They tell it all. You know what I'm saying? They bring receipts. They take it to social media. They want to be first. And when they can't be first and they see that the relationship really isn't going anywhere, then at that point in time, they're ready to just spill all the damn tea. So basically, she leaked all these voicemail messages. And in the voicemails, you hear him getting upset um, when his damn side piece from Atlanta didn't pick up her phone. He's also saying that, you know, he sold his seeds and he's invested in them. And then he calls her back and <laughs> then he calls the woman back and says that his wife found out about their hotel rendezvous now my thing is this why would you need to get a hotel room for an emotional affair if it's something emotional that's usually something on the internet or by phone but being that you guys are in each other's physical presence in a damn hotel room that says to me that that's a sexual affair okay that does not scream emotional so this entire situation is a hot damn mess y'all go ahead and listen to these tapes and i'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary Yo, are you, like, ignoring me now? I'm just trying to make sure. Let me get this straight. I'm being ignored by someone who I have fought to so feed into, get resources to. I'm in your city, and I can't get a call back. I just wanted to make sure I got my facts straight. Got it. When you get this message deleted, my wife saw our text messages from Friday. She knows you were in the same hotel as me, and she does not know. When you get this message deleted, my wife saw our text messages from Friday. She knows you were in the same hotel as me, and she does not know.
All right, so you guys just heard what he had to say. And when I tell you this situation's a hot damn mess, but I'm not shocked. Because like I always tell y'all, 90% of guys cheat, okay? I mean, there is that small 10% that don't cheat, but, you know, that's that's the rarity. Um, But, yeah, you know, pastors, basketball players, you know, celebrities, rappers, they, you know, they can't run from the cooch. Um, but anyways, it, it was just funny to me when they put him in the hot seat. He looked like he was stressed out. And what was just funny, you know, after listening to that mess is the fact that, one, he lied. Like they say in the church, you know, tell the truth, shame the devil. So he lied right there on national television. But what's even more sadder is we all know his wife is not going to leave him. She's come, she's become accustomed to a particular lifestyle. She's riding around in a Lamborghini. So the first lady ain't going no damn where, okay? Especially not to no side chick. But what I find funny is that she was just so quick to get up and clap. And, you know, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Like, girl, sit your ass down somewhere. That man is singing all types of beef stick all through Atlanta, okay? At least this time it's with a woman and he's not on the damn DL because, you know, there's a lot of that going on in Atlanta as well. But, um, you know, this whole situation is just a damn mess. I can't take this pastor and his community peen seriously. Um, This is why I don't take a lot of religious figures seriously. A lot of them say one thing and they lead a whole different lifestyle. But, you know, to each his own. Anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire messy situation, honey. Concerning Pastor John Gray, lying on the reel, swearing up and down, he didn't really cheat. It was just emotional, only for his side chick to literally spill the tea. So let me know what you guys think about this entire messy situation. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces. Hey.